I came across a post on Facebook that shows hundreds of tiny three-digit numbers. Most of them are the same, with few scattered exceptions, asking players to locate the different numbers. What came to my mind is, if I had these numbers in an Excel spreadsheet, I would use conditional formatting to answer the question in a twinkling of an eye. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you some interesting tips and tricks in conditional formatting that you may not know. So let's get started. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have some sales data for 12 months for four regions, and I visualize this data by creating two conditional formatting rules. In the first set, I created an icon set conditional formatting rule, and in the second occurrence, I created a conditional formatting data bar. To save some real estate in my worksheet, I would like to combine the two rules. I'm going to select the range where I have the first rule, and then I go to the Home tab, I click on Copy, and then I go to the destination where I want to have the two rules combined together, I select the range and then I go to the home tab, I click on the down arrow of the paste command and here is a beautiful option that allows me to merge the two conditional formatting rules. When I hover over it, it says merge conditional formatting and when I give it a click, I have the two rules merged together in one single set. In the next worksheet, it's visible that I have some conditional formatting rules. I have color scaled conditional formatting in column B and then in columns E and F, I have data bar conditional formatting. Are these the only two rules I have in the worksheet? Maybe I have some other rules, but I don't see them. How in the world can I locate the conditional formatting ranges? To do that, I go to the right side of the Home tab, I click on the down arrow for Find and Select, and here I select Conditional Formatting. And as you can see, I have two more conditionally formatted ranges that I couldn't identify because we don't have any data. The conditional formatting rule in column I to L highlights the number that are greater than 150, while the conditional formatting rule in columns B to E highlights duplicate values. Let me test. Here, if I type a number like 48, nothing happens but if i type a number above 150 let's say 156 then in this case the conditional formatting rule pops up the one having the duplicate condition if i type let's say 98 nothing happens if i type 56 nothing happens but if i type 98 a second time then the rule pops up and i was able to locate all the ranges having conditional formatting in the worksheet. Should you wish to clear the conditional formatting from the entire worksheet, you click on the down arrow for conditional formatting, clear rule, and you select clear rule from entire worksheet. In this example, I have a list which shows some items in column A, the date it was sold, the cost, the quantity, and the total. And I would like to find out the top three values, but I want to highlight the entire record for the top three or four or five values or whatever number I want. Well, if I just want to highlight the total column, then in this case, I go to conditional formatting, I use one of the built-in rules, the top and bottom rule. But because I want to highlight the entire record, then I need to do that by using a formula. I select the entire range where the conditional formatting rule will live, starting from row number three. Shift control down arrow to extend the range. And I go to conditional formatting and I click on new rule. And I want to use a formula. What do I type in the formula box? If you look at cell F1, I have the number of records that I want to highlight. Then I'm going to create a formula that looks at the total column in column E. And because I'm creating the rule from the perspective of the active cell, I say equal, and I click on cell E3. I want to lock it to the column, but not to the row. And then I hit F4 two times, then I have a dollar sign in front of the column. And I say, is it greater than or equal to the third large value 
that means first, second, or third. And I say greater than or equal large. I'm using the large function to find the third large value. I select the top cell, shift control down arrow, and then I type a comma. Instead of typing three here, I typed it in a cell in cell F1. I select this cell and I close the bracket. Whenever we find the first large, the second large, the third large, how would you like to format them? I click on format and in the format cell dialog box, I go to the fill tab and let's say I want to format them with a yellow fill. I select yellow and then I hit OK, another OK and here you go. I have the entire record corresponding to the top three values highlighted. If I change this number and I make it four, then the top four records are highlighted. Now I want to make it a lot more dynamic. I want to make it more impressive. I go to the developer tab. I click on the down arrow for insert for controls. And I want to make it a lot more dynamic by creating a scroll bar that controls the number in F1. I click on scroll bar. When my mouse pointer changes to a plus sign, I click and drag to create the scroll bar. And then I click on properties. For the properties, I want the current value to be four. And then for the minimum, I want it one. For the maximum, I want it six. And then for the page increment, I want it one. And here is the important thing. I want to link it to cell F1. When I hit OK, I'm done. I deselect. And now if I test, I click on the left pointing arrow. Then I'm highlighting the top three records. I have a dynamic label in cell A1 that looks at F1 and it says top three sales amount. I can make it four. I can make it five. I can make it six. That's the maximum I set for the control. To make it look more impressive, I press control and click on the scroll bar and I move it and position it over F1 and I finished creating my conditional formatting rule. In this example, I have in column A a list of tasks and the due date in column B. In column C, I have the percentage of completion. I want to find out those tasks that are due this week. I can select the date column and then I go to the home tab. I click on the down arrow for conditional formatting, highlight set rule, and here is a beautiful little known option, edit occurring. I click on the down arrow and select an option. That I can select last week, this week, next week, last month, yesterday, today, tomorrow, and so on. But hold on a second. I will be highlighting just the date column. Well, I want to highlight the entire record to recognize the task. And I'm not going to use this built-in rule. And I'll be creating my own rule by using a function. The function is simple. I start by selecting the entire range. Shift, control, down, arrow. I go to conditional formatting and I select new rule, create a formula. In the formula dialog box, what's your formula? I'm creating my formula from the perspective of the active cell, but I'm always looking at column B, the column having the date. And I'm wondering, is the week number of the date equal to the week number of today? If so, then this task is due this week. Then I use a week number function, equal week number, week num. I open bracket, I click on cell B3, and I hit F4 twice to lock it to the column, and I close the bracket, and I say, is it equal to the week num? And I open bracket of today. I open and close bracket and close bracket for the week num. And I would like to add a zero. And I'll tell you why I'm adding a zero. Adding a zero will not change anything. Then I hit a plus sign and I click on cell F1. I'm actually adding a zero. How would you like to format it? I click on format. And let's say I want to format it in yellow. And then I hit OK and another OK. And here you go. These are the tests due this week. In columns K and L that are currently hidden, I created a short list that shows zero for this week, minus one for last week, one for next week. I also created an XLOOKUP function that looks at the label in cell E1 and accordingly it extracts the number. 
Now I can hide these two columns, right click and hide, and then I can test. I have a drop list. If I select last week, these are the tests that were due last week. If I want to select the test for next week, I select next week, and these are the tests that are due next week, because the XLOOKUP function now is adding one. For last week, it was subtracting one. To make it more impressive, you can change the color of cell F1 and make it white, and no one will ever recognize how this functionality is working. Few weeks ago, I posted a tutorial to my channel on how to create a bar chart that is conditionally formatted. I encourage you to watch this tutorial by clicking on the link below the video. Today, I want to simulate this functionality by using a multicolor conditional formatting data bar. So here is my finished project. I have the list of parks in column A. And then I have the status of the park in column B and the percentage of maintenance completion in column C. And I created a multicolor conditional formatting data bar. Let me show you how I did it. I have the same data in this worksheet. And I start by creating in column D a formula that shows how much of the maintenance remains. I type an equal sign. I open bracket, I type 1 minus C4. I close the bracket and I multiply by 100. I hit Control Enter, and then I'm going to copy it all the way down. Now I want to create three conditional formatting rules in preparation for creating the multicolor data bar conditional formatting. I click on Conditional Formatting, New Rule, and then I want to use a formula. The formula is simple. I will be changing the fill color according to the status. So if it's open, I want a green fill. If it's closed, I want a red fill. And if it's open on weekends, I want an orange fill. I start by creating the first rule. I click on cell B4 and I lock it to the column only. Then I hit F4 twice. And I say if it is equal to weekends and I type weekends in double quotation, in this case, I want an orange fill color. I click on Format. I select the orange fill, and then I hit OK, and then other OK. Now I have an orange fill wherever I have weekends. I want to create two more rules, and there is a beautiful trick here. If I click on Conditional Formatting, Manage Rule, then there is a relatively recent option, Duplicate Rule. I select the rule. I want to duplicate it twice, and I'm going to modify each occurrence. For the second one, if it is equal to closed, I edit the rule and I say instead of weekends, I want to change it to closed in double quotation. And in this case, I want to format it in red. I change the format color. I make it red and then I hit OK and then other OK. I want to change the third rule for open and make it green. And I hit OK and then other OK. Now I can see the three colors depending upon the status of the part. Now let's create one more conditional formatting data bar that looks at the number of the remaining percentage of completion. I click on conditional formatting data bar and I select solid data bar. Of course, it's not meaningful so far, then I need to manage the rule. I click on Conditional Formatting, Manage Rule. I select the last one, the data bar, and I want to edit the rule. The first thing I do, I want to change the color of the data bar, and I'll make it white. I want to change the type to number for the minimum and maximum. I will set the maximum to 100. I want to show the bar only. And here is the very important thing. I want to change the bar direction. And because the white bar that will appear represents the remaining completion, what will remain is the percentage that represents what is already completed. So I change the bar direction and I make it right to left. I hit OK and another OK. And here you go. I can also simulate data labels by referencing the numbers in column C. Then I type equal 
and I click on the number in column C, I hit enter, and I double click and send it down. Of course, you understand that I previously created a conditional formatting rule that formats the font based upon column B, the status of the part, and I simulated a bar chart by creating a multicolor data bar conditional formatting. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.